What most people know about America's origins is that it was discovered by Columbus. However, there's something about its origin that you probably only know now. What if we tell there's solid evidence that Native Americans eventually tumbled from a solitary founding community originally allocated from a basal East Asian core population located near mainland Southeast Asia about 36,000 years ago? You might be both surprised and skeptical right now. Hello and welcome back to the Abandoned Archaeologist again, the channel to learn about ancient archaeological findings. Today we're going to talk about the mysterious genetic origins of early Americans before Columbus. It sounds interesting, and it surely is. So let's begin with our video. But before we begin, to get your attention, we have a question you can answer at the end of the video by watching it. Who were the very first Americans? Write down your answer in the comment section and see if you got it right. Here we begin with our video. According to our founding myths, the hemisphere was barely populated, mostly by nomads living lightly on the land, and the land was mostly a vast wilderness. However, recent research indicates that the Americas had more people than Europe when Columbus arrived, and that most people lived in complex, highly organized societies. Charles C. Mann compiled evidence of pre-Columbian America's sophistication in his new book, 1491, New Revelations of the Americas Before Columbus. The origin of Native Americans in the United States began thousands of years before the country's founding with the Paleo-Indian settlement of the Americas. Anthropologists and archaeologists have identified and studied various cultures from this period. Their subsequent contact with Europeans had a significant impact on their history. Europeans who arrived in the New World encountered people from the frozen north to the frozen south. All of them had well-developed cultures and languages. The Skraling were most likely the ancestors of the Inuit in Canada and Greenland and the Inupiat in Alaska. The Tano were a people who lived in multiple chiefdoms throughout the Caribbean and Florida. Based on cultural and linguistic similarities, they diverged from earlier populations from the lands in South America, now known as Guyana and Trinidad. In 1492, the Spanish brought no women with them and raped the Tano women, resulting in the first generation of Mestizo, people of mixed ancestry. After that, European alleles started migrating and mixed into the indigenous population and the process continued. However, these continents were already populated before Columbus's arrival. The indigenous people were not always there, nor did they originate there, as some of their traditions claim, but they had occupied these lands in America for at least 20,000 years. The origins of these people are a complicated and contentious subject, but they begin in the north. From 30,000 to 11,000 BC, planet Earth was subjected to a cold snap that affected the sea forming glaciers and ice sheets that extended from the poles. Known as the last glacial maximum, it occurred when the most recent ice age was at its greatest. Drilling mud cores from the seabed allowed us to reconstruct the history of the land and seas, particularly by measuring oxygen concentrations and looking for pollen deposited on dry ground by the flora growing there. Pinpointing the source of early Americans. It also needs to be made clear where these first Americans originated. The conventional wisdom has long held that three Western Asian immigrants populated North America. Those immigrants crossed a land bridge created by a drop in sea levels during the last ice age, which trapped water in the polar ice caps. This land bridge, however, no longer exists because water levels rose during the last ice age and washed it away. DNA analysis and cross-cultural comparisons between ancient Americans and their Eastern Asian relatives have bolstered this conventional wisdom. The most recent radio dating analysis of the Bluefish Cave's remnants of life indicates that people lived there 24,000 years ago. These founding peoples spread across the continents 
over 12,000 years and formed the pool from which all Americans were drawn until 1492. What was there before Columbus? Before Columbus, the Americas were populated by pockets of tribal groups spread across the North and South continents. Individual cultures have been identified by age, location, and specific technologies, as well through newer methods of knowing the past, such as genetics and linguistics. Scholars have proposed various migration patterns from Beringia into the Americas. For example, it has been proposed that there were multiple waves or that certain people with specific technologies spread from north to south. Both ideas have since fallen out of favor. The multiple waves theory has not succeeded as a model because the linguistic similarities used to demonstrate migration patterns need to be more convincing and the second theory fails due to timing issues. The technology that culture leaves behind is frequently used to name and identify it. Clovis, New Mexico, is a small town with a population of 37,000. However, there is evidence of humans living in southern Chile without Clovis technology 12,500 years ago. These people were far away to show a direct link between Clovis and them in a way that indicates that Clovis are South American Aborigines. The emerging theory today is that the people who lived in the Bluefish Caves 24,000 years ago were the founders and represent an isolated culture for a thousand years up in the cold north, incubating the population to seed everywhere else. This concept is known as the Beringian Standstill. Those founders diverged from known populations in Siberian Asia around 40,000 years ago, crossed Beringia, and remained until 16,000 years ago. Examining indigenous peoples' genomes reveals 15 founding mitochondrial types not found in Asia. This points to a period of genetic diversification, possibly lasting 10,000 years. New gene variants spread across the American continent but not into Asia because the waters cut them off. Nowadays, modern Native Americans have lower levels of genetic diversity than the rest of the world, despite being descended from only those original 15. But again, this supports the idea of a small, single population seeding the continents, and unlike in Europe or Asia, these people being cut off for thousands of years with little admixture from new populations at least until Columbus. There is also the tragic story of Kennewick Man, the discovery of the skeletal remains of what forensic anthropologists call Kennewick Man in 1996 threw a wild card into the anthropological hat. Kennewick Man's remains were carbon dated to be around 8,000 years old. Still, his physiological characteristics and DNA patterns were inconsistent with the surrounding Indian tribes of the Northwest, and for that matter, Eastern Asia. How did it start? To Kennewick, Washington, residents discovered a broad-faced skull showing its way out of the Columbia River Bank while attending a hydroplane race in 1996. Over 350 fragments of teeth and bone were eked out of this 8,500-year-old grave over weeks and years all belonging to a middle-aged man, possibly in his 40s, who had been deliberately buried with very few signs of injuries that were healed over his life. An incision from a spear, a cracked rib, and a minor depression fracture on his forehead. However, political controversies surrounding his body have severely hampered his scientific value for the past 20 years. As a result, he became known as the Ancient One among Native Americans and five clans, most notably the Colville Reservation's Confederated Tribes, wanted to have him ceremonially reburied by the NAGPRA, Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, which grants custodial rights to Native American artifacts and bodies discovered on their lands. To put the icing on the already sour cake, a Satru Folk Assembly, a Californian pagan group, put in a bid for his body, claiming Kennewick Man to have had a Norse tribal identity and that if science could prove the body was European, 
he should be given a ceremony honoring Odin, the mythical ruler of Asgard. Anzic provides conclusive evidence that North and South America was inhabited by the same people. Anzic's mitochondrial genome is similar to modern people in Central and South America. In addition, the Ancient One's genes are most similar to those of tribes in the Seattle area today. These similarities do not imply that either they were those tribe members, nor do they imply that their genes did not spread throughout the Americas over thousands of years. Instead, they demonstrate that population dynamics, how ancient indigenous people relate to contemporary Native Americans, are complex and vary by region. No one is completely static, and genes are even less so. President Barack Obama, during his final act as president, signed legislation allowing Kennewick Man to be reburied as a Native American in December 2016. Anzic was discovered on private land, so he was not subject to NACPRA rules, but he was reburied in 2014 in a ceremony involving several tribes. Anzic and Kennewick Man are small samples that provide a tantalizing glimpse of the big picture. But unfortunately, politics and history are also impeding progress. The legacy of over 500 years of occupation has made understanding how the Americas were first populated extremely difficult. Comparisons to Old Europe If you could take a snapshot of this American world around the year 1200 and compare it to a similar snapshot of the European world around the same time, you'd be surprised at how similar they are. Southern Europe and the Mediterranean Sea were once home to several great civilizations, including the Greeks, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, and Romans. However, by the end of the 400s, the Roman Empire was in serious trouble. First, it went through a bloody civil war that split the empire. Next, it replaced the old Roman gods with the new religion of Christianity. Then waves of Asian immigrants pushed up against the populations of Northern Europe. These populations spilled over the borders of Rome, causing a massive cultural and political collapse within the Roman Empire. After around the year 900, a new threat emerged from the Mediterranean world's underbelly in the form of a new religion, Islam, which overran the old Roman provinces of Asia, Palestine, Egypt, and North Africa, and lapped up to modern-day France's borders. Europe became a cultural and economic backwater as a result of these pressures. Moreover, it was politically disorganized and divided as the former empire's provinces established their own small-scale political shops. Its internal economy had been reduced to the most basic forms of barter and reciprocity. It appeared the things would remain this way for a long time because ancient cultures are rarely resurrected. These cultures' internal resources had already been depleted, and the possibility of importing outside influences and new ideas to revive a culture was prohibitively expensive. Europeans were taught a history of migration from birth, with Greeks and Romans spreading across Europe, conquering lands, and interfering from afar. People entered and exited Africa and Asia through Judeo-Christian legend, and the Silk Routes connected Europeans to the east and back. Many European countries have historically been seafaring nations, exploring and at times belligerently constructing empires for commerce or imposing a perceived superiority over other people. As a result, European culture is infused with migration despite our national identities and the pride and traditions that come with them. This is not the culture of Native Americans. Only some believe they have always lived in their lands or that they are a fixed people. However, the migration narrative doesn't threaten European identity in a similar way that it might for the people we call Indians. The scientifically valid idea of people migrating from Asia to the Americas may call into question native creation stories. It may also conflate early modern migrants from the 15th century and later with those 24,000 years ago undermining indigenous claims to land and sovereignty. The Havasupai is located deep within the Grand Canyon's lakes. They were there for about 800 years, 
and their name signifies people of the blue-green waters. They're a small tribe with about 650 members today, and the tribe is rife with type 2 diabetes. Using the samples for historical migration revealed that the Havasupai originated from ancient ancestors in Siberia, consistent with our understanding of human history based on all scientific and archaeological methods. However, this contradicts the belief of the Havasupai religion that they originated in situ in the Grand Canyon. With the current understanding of Native American genomics, there is no way DNA could be used to assign tribal status to individuals. So what do you think about the origin of Native Americans before Columbus? Share with us in the comments below and have you guessed the answer to our question? Well, the answer is the very first Americans were nomadic wanderers. Surprised to know this? Well, stay tuned and subscribe for more such uploads.